Hello everyone, James Donaldson here. And I'm actually bringing you a video because I had an interesting interaction with my friend the other night. He, uh, he was on a site that was selling kits for guns to basically order the parts and put them together yourself. And they weren't being sent to an FFL, which I'll explain what that is in a moment. And uh, so he texted me pictures of the, of the kits and he said, do I have everything I need to make the rifle? And I'd look at it and I'd say, no, you don't. And then he sent me another picture, same parameters, same question. And I would say, no, you don't. So, if you want to understand why, stay tuned. something that really really gets under my skin when people talk about it and that's the gun show loophole and the internet loophole a lot of people are trying to figure out laws to prevent these things when I'm here to tell you that neither one exists now with every video I always have my gentleman's disclosure at the beginning to kinda broad stroke what I'll be talking about so overall in this video I'm going to be talking about gun sale myths especially as they apply where I'm from so the aside to that being Always check your local and state laws and even federal laws as I'm dealing with information that has come to me at the time of the date that is stamped on this video. Now, moving into it, I want to define a couple terms. The first one we're not going to mention so much in this video, but a lot of the process does mirror what we are talking about in this video. So that term is SOT. It stands for Special Occupational Tax, and that's basically anyone who's able to purchase, sell, distribute, etc. weapons covered under the NFA, which is the National Firearms Act. That's what super regulated suppressors or silencers, short barrel shotguns, short barrel rifles, and a few other items. So most FFLs are SOTs and I believe all SOTs are also FFLs. What's an FFL, James? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'll define it. FFL is Federal Firearms License or when you refer to someone as an FFL, they're a Federal Firearms Licensee. It kind of depends on how you use it in a sentence. The point being that an FFL is someone who buys and sells guns as a business and they are regulated by the BATFI, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Now, what does that mean? Well, gun sales are traced to an FFL and that FFL then sells guns to citizens. The FFLs have to track these sales and they're audited by the ATF who basically shows up and says we have a record that you have all these guns and if the FFL can't show the person the gun, they better be able to show them what's called a Form 4473, which is what every single individual fills out when they buy a gun from an FFL. And so that way it says I don't have the gun because I sold it to this person. Now, um, FFLs take really two types. Um, they're either a brick and mortar store or they're somebody who does the job out of their house. Now, as of the Obama administration, <coughs> infringement, uh, the Obama administration, they prevented people from becoming new FFLs out of their house. Now, what I'll give them is that they allowed people who are already FFLs in their house to be grandfathered in. So, it's still legit if they were before this. Now, what I don't know is I don't know if the Trump administration overturned that or not. I don't have that information, but it's probably easy to look up. Now, from there, um, who all is an FFL in stores? Well, if you're buying it from literally any kind of business, so that's going to include sporting goods stores, pawn shops, gun stores, gun ranges, etc., etc., etc. And of course, as I mentioned, people doing the business in their house. Now, a Form 4473 is what you fill out right before the background check. It's a list of, uh, well, it's information for you and then a list of questions that you have to answer yes or no to. And a lot of people make the point, well, you can just lie on the form. They're right. You could do that. Uh, but it's also a felony. So we'll just kind of let that be what it is. Just know that you shouldn't lie on that form. Anyway, moving on. Um, if you're a private citizen, you're obviously not an FFL, 
So you're not required in this day and age to do a background check. Now some states are passing state legislation where they call it universal background checks and you have to. We'll get into that a little bit. So uh, let's go ahead and go into a few different scenarios and I'm going to use a series of props to help illustrate the, the different people at play. So uh, I will introduce my main player, Chick. Chick is uh, selling his Glock 17. It's a little big for him to conceal carry. Now, he has not seen my video on the Glock 26XL, so he doesn't know that there are some things he can do to help make it more concealable. Anyway, so there's a few ways to find a buyer if you're a private seller. You can put an ad up at some shooting ranges or gun stores. Of course, there's also gun clubs. And then you can always find somebody through word of mouth or maybe just sell it to a friend or even a relative. In these scenarios, because Chick is a private citizen and does not possess an FFL, Chick is not required in Kansas, at least, to have anybody go through a background check or fill out a Form 4473. Now, if Chick wants to, he can have a CYA form. That stands for Cover Your Ass. Chick could actually have someone fill out a 4473 and just not do the background check, but still have the person's information. Personally, I have a sheet I have that lays out the terms. It has the person's driver's license number, address, and phone number. It also has signatures from both of us and the serial number of the weapon, or weapons if there's a trade. Now, going from there, Chick has found a buyer through something called Arms List, which is like a Craigslist for guns. No, they're not giving me money. I would love it if they did, and if they saw this video, maybe they will give me money, but they probably won't. Anyway, Arms List is like a Craigslist for guns. There's no transaction on the website. It's simply to help buyer and seller of guns and accessories for guns meet. So, through Arms List, Chick has met Hedgehog. Hedgehog is very interested in this Glock 17 for home defense. And I will tell you, the Glock 17 fits that bill just fine. So, they meet up in a Chili's parking lot or Banana Republic or wherever it happens to be that they've agreed upon. And of course, uh, they cannot trespass to do this. So, that being said, they go ahead and go through the terms of the agreement, whether it's gun for money, gun for gun, gun for gun and money, whatever they choose. So, there's the sale. Now, let's complicate it a little bit. In Kansas and Missouri, if you're selling a long gun across state lines to Kansas or Missouri, I don't know about other states, but you don't have to involve a 4473 or an FFL or a background check for long guns. Now, for handguns you do. So, Chick, having sold his Glock 17, he needs a gun for concealed carry. And there's one that looks perfect. The H&K P30SK. This one has a safety, of course a hammer, and a decocker. And this one in particular has the Trujicon HD night sights. It's a good gun. Anyway, um, so that gun is being sold by none other than the Rootness Tootness Cowgirl in the West. Her name is Jessie, and she's a law-abiding citizen. So when she finds out the chick is a Kansas residence, is Kansas resident and she is a Missouri resident, they agree that they need to meet at an FFL in the state that the gun is going to, which in this case would be Kansas. So they meet at Great Plains Guns, which also happens to be my FFL. And they're represented by none other than this pink duck. So they go there and Great Plains Guns has Chick fill out a 4473 and then of course they call in for the background check. So, those of people who think that that's too quick of a background check, do remember that this is the 21st century and we have a thing called the internet and many other resources. So anyway, moving on, as long as Chick's background checks out, Chick gets to go home with said H&K P30SK. And of course, Jessie can go home with her winnings, be it money or money and gun or gun, whatever. Again, it's all about the terms you set. So. In that instance, you have a private sale across state lines, but in this case, one that required a background check. So, kind of giving you some examples here of the, the fairly stringent rules that are already in place. Now, let's take it up a notch. Gun show. Chick is now interested in uh, some guns for home defense. So, Chick goes into a gun show in Kansas, mind you, because Chick is a Kansas resident, and Chick sees at a booth... It's Mark 18. 
beautiful weapon. Tack light, Vortex UH-1. <sighs> Sorry. Anyway, point is that Chick sees this at a booth, and Chick looks at who is in charge of the booth, and that would be none other than Elephant. An Elephant is a business owner, and therefore has an FFL. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, James, gun show loophole, man. Oh yeah, Elephant is going to sell the hell out of that gun to Chick, no background check. Man, you're wrong. Elephant has an FFL, which means that Elephant is required by federal law to have Chick fill out a 4473, and then Elephant must do the background check. Now, um, I think you're probably going to start understanding, if not already, that these rules don't really apply in terms of where you are, but who you are. Because next booth over, Chick sees this absolutely fantastic Glock 40. 10 mil, basically a pistol for hunting. It's like Thor's hammer. Anyway, um, so this pistol is being sold by none other than Mr. Bucket. Mr. Bucket is a private citizen, does not hold an FFL, which means that Mr. Bucket is not required to make Chick fill out a Form 4473. Now, as it happens, everybody has rights in this country, and Bucket has decided that any gun Mr. Bucket sells, he is going to have the buyer fill out a 4473 and receive a background check by an FFL holder. Be that as it may, Elephant is next door in terms of the booth at the gun show, so Elephant is able to oblige. Most FFL holders will simply do this for a small fee. So, uh, for the small fee, Elephant has Chick fill out the paperwork, does the background check, and there you have it. So by choice, Bucket has had a background check done. So, at this point, I very much don't understand where people have this whole idea of a gun show loophole. Again, it's very much about not where you are, but who you are. Moving on, let's get into the internet. I mentioned arms list earlier and how it's kind of like Craigslist for guns, and there are other sites like that that are all about getting people to meet up. It's very similar, just like Craigslist, it's like putting an ad in the newspaper. It's a very similar thing for arms list, except again, it's for guns and accessories. So, um, really, arms list is more of an interstate tool or right around state lines. So, Kansas and Missouri, it's kind of a tool for people on both sides to meet up, and of course, people within the states to meet up as well. So, again, depending on your laws, those are, going to, those are rules you're going to follow, which I mentioned earlier. Now, there are sites like Gunbroker. By the way, Gunbroker also doesn't give me money. I hope they do, but they probably won't. Anyway, Gunbroker being another tool that I use, usually to purchase firearms, they cover pretty nationally. They're kind of like an eBay of guns. You have a wider scope, a wider reach. So in that case, a lot of guns are being shipped versus arms list. Usually people are meeting up. Almost always people are meeting up. So, all that having been said, the guns are going to go to an FFL. So, for instance, Chick, again, clicking around on Gun Broker, and Chick sees a gun that he absolutely cannot let go. It's a Glock 17L. I know it looks a lot like the 40, it's not. Cut out slide, adjustable Glock slides from the factory. Not that they're great, they're just nostalgic. Anyway, point being that Chick wants this gun. So, Chick buys it. Now, like eBay, you can do the purchase through the website on Arms List, or you can also, like in my case, I think every gun I bought through Arms List, I've ended up doing it over the phone with the dealer selling the gun. Now, do keep in mind, private sellers can also use it, but they have to use the same, uh, same rules that, of course, someone like Minnie Mouse is using. Now, she is the one selling the Glock 17. So, she and Chick speak on the phone, she gets his debit card information, and then, there you have it, she's received payment. Now, she will not ship the gun to Chick, because that's against the law, the federal law. Instead, what she does is she receives a copy of Chick's FFL information, being the FFL that Chick uses, which is Great Plains Guns, and so, on that copy of the actual license is the physical, actual address 
where Great Plains Guns is registered. So that's where the Glock 17L is shipped to. And when it arrives, Great Plains Guns receives it. Let's check no. Chick goes to Great Plains Guns, fills out the 4473, and then they do their background check. So, um, the same goes for when you buy guns off individual websites. That's just going straight to the manufacturer versus another form of sales, which would be gun broker or sites like that. So, I don't understand the internet loophole. You can't have a gun shipped to your house unless you're an FFL in which you're under a different set of rules, which are actually more stringent than if you're a private citizen. So, uh, moving into caveats and variables. Basically, there's a big one, which is um, a lot of people are going to say, well, what about parts? What about your friend, James? At the beginning of the video, you talked about your friend trying to buy a kit. Well, again, if you recall, he was always picking out kits that were missing a certain part to make the gun work. So let me explain that. Guns have serialized parts. For instance, this pistol here, this Glock 17, has a serialized barrel that matches a serialized slide that matches a serialized frame. The frame is the regulated part on pistols. So for instance, when I made my Glock 26 XL that simply comprised of ordering an extra grip and having it chopped, even if I didn't have the trigger and all these other parts in here, it would still have this metal stamp on it. This grip is the regulated part. This has to be sent to an FFL. So when I ordered this, it had to be sent to Great Plains Guns, where they received the literal piece of plastic and then, of course, I had to come in and have a background check done to purchase this piece of plastic. In which case, then, I could use it. Now, for instance, pistol slides, you can have sent straight to your house, but slides kind of hard to use if you don't have the lower grip part. So, there is that. Now, let's get into something a little more formidable. Remember this Mark 18 up here. So, AR-type rifles and pistols. This is a pistol. According to the ATF, thank you for your arbitrary and silly laws. Anyway, um, taking this part here, which I've been told I can't do on screen. Now, this is an upper receiver. This is a complete one with all working parts for the upper. This can be sent to your house, for instance. This cannot. The many parts on this can be sent to your house, just like from the pistol, the trigger can be sent to your house, just not the frame. But let me show you what this frame looks like. I want you to pay special attention to this area of the weapon. Now, bear with me just a second there. So, moving forward, this is a stripped lower, as it's called. As you can see, is just a piece of metal because it's lightweight. It's hardly even a paperweight. Now, when I ordered this from Palmetto State Armory, it is serialized. It had to go to Great Plains Guns because this is the regulated part. So, this had to go to Great Plains Guns where I had to come and have a background check to own this piece of metal. So, as far as gun kits go, those kits that my friend was trying to order, they didn't have the serialized, or the, excuse me, they didn't have the regulated part as far as the BAT fee, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, is concerned. So, you can debate or not whether you think it's an asinine law or not, but the point is that that law is in place, therefore there's no way for me to get a fully functioning firearm without going through an, uh, excuse me, an FFL, which also means I can't do it without a background check unless I'm buying in-state from another private seller. So, this all being said, um, the clothes. I think I've proven at this point that there is no gun show loophole and that there is no internet loophole. I don't understand where the misnomers came from and I think while s most people talk about them without having any really good ideas to what laws are or how they affect the firearms community, I think there are a few people that perpetuate these rumors because they mean ill will toward the Second Amendment. And we here at Contemporary Gentlemen believe that there are two types of people in the gun debate. There are the people who are educated, and then there are the people who are horrifically uneducated. So, to do our part, we want to do videos to help educate. So I hope you found this video educational and helpful in understanding more about gun laws. 
And if you liked it, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Uh, feel free to leave comments as we've left that open. And of course, if you like the video a lot, please support us on Patreon. You can also follow us on Instagram, which is down below. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep your composure.